I'm starting out this year with this word passion. And I've already spoken a little on it already. And if you're at the altar, uh, and you can stay at the altar, if you feel led during the next few minutes to come down to the altar, you are welcome. If you, I wouldn't go far because I am going to have another altar call in just a minute that will really demand the response of every person that calls themselves a Christian in this room. I'm going to read this scripture here. I want first want to ask you a question. Can you even imagine what it would look like to stand in the very throne room of God? Can you imagine? There's a song saying, I can only imagine. I've been singing that for years. But we can only truly imagine. But in Isaiah chapter 6, we get a little bit of a glimpse of a man that got to stand in the throne room of God through a vision that God gave him. And it says this, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of His robe filled the temple. Above Him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two He covered His face, and with two He covered His feet, and with two He flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. God just spoke to us and said that He's already here, but we need to bring Him with us. I want you to think about that. It's, I believe it's very important. Because there's a difference between God being somewhere and the manifest presence of God in the lives of the people that follow Him. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. For I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the King the Lord of hosts then one of the seraphim flew to me having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar and he touched my mouth and said behold this has touched your lips your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. What excitement. What awe. What passion there must have been in Isaiah's heart when he opened his eyes in the amazing vision to the throne room of God, seeing the King sitting on the throne and the angels around Him worshiping. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. To hear the voice of God shake the foundations of heaven. What an impact it must have had on his life to stand in the manifest holiness of God. How would you feel? What would your reaction be in the very presence of the holy God of all there ever was or will be? Do you believe that it would change your very being from the inside out? I want to tell you that four things happened to Isaiah when he opened his eyes in heaven. The first thing was he saw God's holiness. He saw the holiness of God and those that responded to God in true, passionate worship. There was nothing else that was important but the holiness of the King of kings and Lord of lords would sit on the throne before Him. 
That was all that mattered in that moment was the pure holiness of God. And in the holiness of God in those moments, Isaiah then, he realized his sin and confessed his sin immediately. He saw God. And the first thing he says is, I am unrighteous, I am unclean, I am unholy. And in his sin, he cried out. The next thing that happened to Isaiah was his sins were washed. Actually, his sins were burned away. We get a difference. By the blood of Jesus, in the very presence of God, when we approach the throne of God and we confess our sins before the Lord, He does not burn our sins away. He washes us clean. And in those moments, He answered the call of God. He did not know what the next steps were going to be. He just heard the question from God. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah's simple response in the presence of the very Holy One was here am I. Send me. Isaiah was already a man of God. He was already a prophet of God. As I studied about prophets, I learned that prophets and priests were dramatically different. Both of them had the task of delivering the word of God. But priests tried to keep the status quo. They tried to do everything to make the people happy. We don't want to upset them by saying things that might cause a stir, that might offend somebody or step on their toes. We want to have a good temple time. Let us not hurt the feelings of people by telling them that their sin is destroying their life. But a prophet, a prophet was a sole man of God that would walk in on the scene and whenever he walked in the room, when he walked into an area, the people were afraid because the prophet would deliver the very word of God and it was normally condemning. It was not convicting. It was condemning. Your sin is destroying you. And if you will not repent of your sin, God is going to destroy you. Today's churches, we preach all this, oh, just oh, just love everybody. Yeah, we're supposed to love everybody. We preach this, let's just everybody be happy. Don't, don't do anything offensive. Don't say anything that might hurt some feelings. Don't preach about sin because when you start talking about sin, it makes people angry. My friends, There is a God in heaven that is jealous that we have turned from Him and we have started allowing sin to run rampant through the church and He has called out to us. He has said, Whom shall I send? But nobody hears His call because they haven't first entered into the presence of the Holy God. Encountering the holiness of God created a passion inside of Isaiah that led to him having his sins burn away. People don't get saved because they just simply come down and pray a prayer. They get saved because they have an encounter, a real encounter with the living God, which is Jesus Christ who died on the cross for their sins. And he he is in heaven. He was resurrected and he's now in heaven waiting to come back for his bride, the church. 
Salvation is not a prayer. Salvation is a transformation and a washing away of your sins because of the encounter with God. And it demands a response. It demands a response. When Isaiah opened his eyes and he saw God, for a moment he was captivated by the holiness and the excitement of what was going on. But very quickly, his heart began to understand that he was unclean. As a man of God already, As a prophet of God, already, he still stood before God and realized he was not holy enough to be in the presence of God. And he still had to repent. Some Christians think that they have reached the ultimate holiness. And they walk around high with their heads held high and lifted up like they have arrived somewhere. Folks, we have not arrived because every time we enter back into the throne room of God, every time we approach the holiness of God, He will show us that we are still an unclean people and we still need to be washed. We still need to confess our sins. We still need to run to His altar and worship Him. My question today, and we've already seen some amazing response and And I'd like to see this every single Sunday. The question I have for you today is, are you here to encounter the holy living God? There are still people in our church that come. You might want to put your steel-toed shoes on. There are still people that come to our church to sing, come to hear a good word, come to see how many people will shake their hands or whether or not the pastor is going to recognize them today. Many come to visit friends, to gossip, to backbite, to hurt. Wait, hold on a second. That's not why we come to church. But that's what happens, isn't it? told you you might want your steel-toed shoes for a moment. I'm almost finished. Pastor, we didn't come here for that. We, we, We came to, really, we came to encounter the living God. If you're going to encounter the living God, it demands a response. You see, through the blood of Jesus, the veil that separated us from the Holy of Holies was torn. And it gave us access to the very throne room of God. I loved what Adria said. You see, when we went to this conference last week, oh, Jim, I'm going to pick on Jim for just a second. The first night was just amazing. But Jim, his hearing aids and the loudness, I mean, it's loud in there. (laughs) You better bring earplugs and earmuffs to cover the earplugs if you're going to go in there and you don't like loud. And Jim said he couldn't handle the loudness up at the front because I'm a front row guy and we were in the third row at the very front. And Jim went and sat in the back. And Rick and I had amazing encounters. Rick was down at the altar. We were both down at the altar and amazing stuff happened. And I walked back and I saw Jim sitting in the back of the room. And I, and I walked up and shook his hand. And I said, what would you think? And he goes, ah, it was good. Ah, it was good. We sit in the back row. We sit in the back. And we we hope that maybe we'll catch something good back here. A pop fly of the Holy Spirit. And we leave and we're like, ah, it's good. And I told Jim, I said, you need to get in the front because that's where the anointing's at. Well, God's anointing is everywhere. But there's distractions in the back row. I said, Jim, you got to come up to the front. He goes, well, I can take my hearing aids out. And maybe that'll help with the worship music because it was so loud. It was so loud. And he came down for the next service and he began to encounter God. 
he responded. The, the message of the first night was, you can't stay here. And they just kept going. It was like the same message almost every time, completely different pastors and everything. But the first message was, you can't stay here. you got to get up from here and go to there. So he responded. He got up from here and he went to there. He got up from the back row and he went to the front. And he began to respond to what was going on. And he encountered God and it changed his life. And by the last night, this poor guy, I'm still picking on him. Because I was up there doing the same thing, so not just him. He was up there bawling his eyes out. I can't believe what God has done. Sorry, worship team, making you stand for so long. You see... First thing we have to do, we, we're going to enter into the kingdom. We're going to enter into the throne room of God. We have to enter in. We've got to open our eyes and see the holiness of God. Now, I don't see angels floating around here right now, but I, I really kind of think they are. I really think that, that as we have come in here to worship, we have literally walked into the throne room of God. Scripture says that we can come before the throne with boldness. Not arrogance, boldness. So you have entered the throne room of God at Bethel Assembly, the house of God. It's not the building, it's the presence and the response of the people. But this should produce a response. This should produce a response in every single one of us right now. If you're truly passionate and in wanting, if, if you haven't encountered God this morning, these are the moments right now to come and cry out to God. I am a man or a woman out there of unclean lips. My sin is terrible before God. And I must respond. I must confess. I must come before you and give it all and let you erase it. Because before God can truly impact you to send you out, you've got to encounter His holiness. Will you come? Find a place around this altar. I want you to put your hands in the air. Our worship team is going to continue and lead us in some of those songs. We've already sang them, but I want you to begin to flood down here to these altars. And I don't care what it is. It's time to lay down your sins before God. And if you're in this place and you think, well, I don't have any sin in my life, you better get down here in a hurry. I am a man of unclean lips. I come from a people of unclean lips. And I need the power of God the blood of Jesus to wash me. So lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Don't be quiet. Folks, this is not a time to be quiet. I want you to begin to shout to the Lord. I want you to begin to sing praises to God. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. We are, we are an unclean people. There's so much in our lives that need to be washed away. That need to be destroyed. And only by your holiness, only by your presence, God, only by your blood, Jesus, can these be washed away. Lord, these people have come to encounter you. God, I pray your anointing 
I pray your power to infect their hearts. I pray, Lord, that their hearts will begin to burn and boil for you. Ora sabata shigiri akoso kiyakai. Ora sa, begin to pray in the spirit. If you don't know the word, just begin to pray. Begin to shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, God. Praise the name above all names. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord of lords and the King of kings. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Lord, let your holy presence manifest in this place. Hallelujah. 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 question that's written that's written down right here in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 I want you to respond however you feel that you should respond but I want you to respond in some way say, Pastor, this is weird. It's not weird to me. I want service like this every single Sunday. Sunday night, Wednesday night, maybe a few in between. Maybe it's time for revival. Maybe revival starts here. So the question is, the question is, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Whom Shall I sin? Who will go for us? What is your response? What is your response? Here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. If that's you, lift your hands. I know not everybody could come all the way down to the altar, but if that's you and you say, I'm here to give everything to God. I don't know what all that's going to mean tomorrow. See, Isaiah was getting ready to get some real weird instructions to go tell the people that they had turned from God. I don't know what God's telling you today. I don't know what God's going to call you to do tomorrow. But my question for you, the question from God is, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Is your response, here am I? Here am I. Here am I. Send me.